see I was in the middle of getting crunk for Jesus and my, my cell phone turned off and said, the phone has reached its max capacity. And I had to delete some power during, and don't, please don't do me like that no more. Please don't do me like that. I, I gotta buy another cell phone. I gotta pay off some debt. Now can I please get back to where I was, please? Uh, thank you. Because I got a message that I got to get out. You can reach a point of understanding, of knowing, where you get to this blank canvas in your mind. And everything your mind used to tell you and you don't have this, this isn't good, this isn't right, this is... You're not going to make it. You're not going to get there. This isn't going to happen. Blah, 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 blah. It just all dissolves. And then the hand of God will give you this blueprint. And it's like rebirth, rejuvenation, recycle. And the Holy Ghost inside of you, it's like a butterfly, comes out of the cocoon to a greater degree of being. And this enthrones in your conscience, in your life, in your possession, when you breathe, when you think, in your thought life, in your movement, where you work. And it stamps and envelops you in a presence, a power. The more you get these upgrades through progression, and progression comes from perseverance. Now the word dedication, devotion, all has a role in what we're speaking about. Life isn't so much about being dedicated. It's more about the greater question, who are you dedicated to? You might be dedicated to your manager at your job. And that manager can give you a raise. But when you're dedicated to the manager of all managers and the power of all powers and the God of all gods and the king of all kings and the Lord of lords and, well the one that gave humanity their ability to promote, well, that devotion has a realm. That devotion has a sphere. That devotion has a host to it, a home to it, a place. And the Spirit of God will meet you there. And you will discover Him there. You will find out about Him there. You will get revelation and resolution from Him there. And you will get insight and prophetic ideals and dreams and visions and downloads and keys and codes and words of knowledge and power there. You'll get it there. And then when you learn how to do it there, achieve there, take over the earth there, live in the completion of your dreams there, well, you found a way to surpass human desire and human emotion and you found a level in your faith to access into a dobe and to stay in a place where you'll begin to get the experience of higher levels of the kingdom living with inside of you because last time I read my Bible and from the Holy Ghost experience he gave it to you without, without, without measure. Without measure. That means you received infinitely. What's inside of you? You can explore throughout the ages, throughout history, throughout the timeline, throughout when dinosaurs first came to existence. You can explore past all of that. In the who you are. Not what you want. Not what you're trying to achieve. Not even in you trying to better yourself and upgrade yourself. Which is good and you should be doing. But you can explore places. Because all the locations. That you could ever want to travel to you. Have a dwelling. And this dwelling is interconnected to the wholeness of the earth. Alaska is one with China. America is one with Africa. Because in the continuum, in the connection of the wind, of the spirit, of life, and the unity, and the wholeness, and the oneness, if you've been going to your spiritual classes faithfully, you will understand this. 
So that dwelling has an omnipresence. So when I dwell in who I am, well, now we're tapping into a level beyond worldly circumstances. And when you begin to, it sounds crazy at first, but when you begin to live like this, because the Bible teaches you have to overcome the world, the devil, and your flesh. The world, the devil, and your flesh. So when you live in the world within, and experience the joy that it has to offer, the infinite love, the unimaginable peace, the just insane, infinite amount of wisdom that does not stop, does not run dry, this river of life that just keeps continually increasing in Christ, it never stops. I've been doing this seven years. It never stops. It just gets better. It just gets bigger. It just gets greater. It just gets mag. It doesn't matter if I'm working at the same job for the past 20 years. I'm living in the same house. I got the same mind. None of that matters. That's circumstantial. That's circumstantial stuff. This is the spirit of the truth of the divine. We're talking here. We're living here. We're experiencing here. We're eating burritos. I'm eating burritos in my room in the glory of God. I'm eating sandwiches in a supernatural feel of wisdom and power. Okay, okay? Yeah. Okay. Now, it's amazing when you don't look at yourself, you were. You notice how when you. I notice, I can't speak for you. I notice when I look at myself in the mirror, I don't really worry. But somehow when I'm not looking at who I am, it's like my image becomes, oh, she doesn't love me, but I want to marry her. She's probably got another boyfriend. All this stuff comes to me. But somehow when I look directly at who I am, that dissolves. So I need to stay looking, but to be filled with the word of God is to stay in that drive. I need God to give me such a surge of power. We're talking to God right now. I need God to move in such a direction. I need God when I throw the ball, not for an angel to catch it, but for his hand to come down from the clouds and catch it and then bring the ball up Slow down time, freeze time, surrounded with so many spheres of wisdom and power and blessing and fame and excitement. And then put it back down in my hand. And then I need to surpass all the opponents. Touch down, do it five more times, and then activate time again. So now I got 75 depths of layers of wisdom and insight past the devil. And I scored so many rhythms before they recognized, perceived, caught, moved, and they didn't see what took place. So I have more possession. You want to possess worldly things? You want more money? That's cool. Because I've been asking God to upgrade me. I have one dream as far as flesh or anything that's do. The only thing I want is to win souls and to serve God. My dream is to get married and be financially stable, be able to buy whatever I want. And even talking about that stuff feels feels lame right now. But that's like my only worldly desire, to get married. And I already have a wife, and God has already shown me. Um, Yeah, that's like my only desire. But my true desire, that's my human desire. But my true desire is God's desire. And so I want to possess every realm. I want to have the occupancy of the Lord and Lordship over each realm in life. I want total possession of this region, this region, this atmosphere, this level, this congregation, this movement, this government, this system, this movement, this placement with the authority I've been given. And the more I regulate that, steward that, 
Apply that. Exercise that. Well, I get to increase in my demand, my control, my hand of God on this earth. And I want to see all my children eating the finest of the finest. If you don't know who you are and live in the expectancy of your royalty, a king, when he sees, oh God, and this is really good right here. We're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. You got to go slow with it. You got to go slow. You, when you eat with your father, when you eat with God, you don't rush your meals. You know, on earth, we rush our meals. We just want to eat, get back to our video games, get back. You have to learn not to rush the food God is serving you. If Jesus cooks some eggs, if he cooks you a meal, you better sit there in reverence. You better not even take a bite until you see him take a bite. You have to learn to sit at your father's table and stay there. And admire his be whatever you have to admire his nose, admire his breath, admire his eyes, admire his pupils, admire every movement he takes. Then you will live in the possession and the habitation of his face, of how he sits on his stone, and you'll gaze on what he looks like, his arms, his figure, his being, his move, his thunder, his might. Okay, so when you Okay. Okay, okay, everyone. Okay, buddies. Yes, Lord, I'm going to buy another phone. Now, with that being said, we'll move forward. It's like in my life, let's downgrade some of our weaknesses. But let's understand that the power of Christ is perfected in our weakness. And let's go somewhere with that. Like two scriptures come together like electricity in your mind. And then you speak from that electricity. And then God will circulate around that. And then the hand of the Lord and an angelic being will come and usher in a new movement of the spirit. In which you just spoke in your words. Heating unto the voice of the Lord. The angels ministers of fire. The wind. And so the fire and the wind. And it will come. It'll combine and then it will regulate a certain diamond, a certain artifact. And then when you can locate all this that's taking place and speak about it while you're seeing the location without even having to hesitate, take a breath, then you have just found a way to unify vision, comprehension, understanding, knowledge, wisdom, tongue, the power of the Lord, and the presence of the Lord. And now that is an altar of power that you get to overlap in and you get to regulate it and you get to really dance in, you get to swim in. And then you know at the right hand of his pleasures are forevermore. You know everlasting is where the forevermore is connected and combined. If you don't think everlasting, you're not thinking in the thought and the terminology of the sentence of the Bible, of the scripture, so you're not walking in the open paradise of what the word is in store, in store for you. You got to understand when you read the word of God, there's something in store for you. So, you have to learn to ask a question to the word of God. Now, it'll hit the word, reflect off it from the true vine. You know, you can ask your mentors questions, which you're supposed to. But when you ask the word of God a question in the stillness of silence. It will happen. It, it, a lot of times it won't even have to speak to you. It'll just happen. The voice will happen. Your becoming will happen. The next level of wealth will happen. That's why serving God is really sacred and secret and divine and amazing. Still to this day. The insight that God speaks, see, there's certain voices that God will speak in and they'll hit me in different ways. I have the Holy Spirit wind that speaks to me in the left side of my ear. I have the insight of God, which speaks at the right direction of my brain. I have the voice of the Lord, which comes out of my heart, out of my soul and speaks to me like an exfoliation like this. Bah. And then I have that voice, which always hits a vision. And then I have this insight, which always hits a directional empowerment. And then I have... There's so many different voices, the voice of the Lord in so many different ways he'll speak to you. 
And as you mature and progress in this, you can get a hand on this. You're like, wait a minute, I know God. This is how God speaks to me. This is what God's doing. When he speaks to me there, he shows me this there. And when he shows me this there, he gets me there that. And then he gives me this insight. And that's why I get a dream and a vision. And when I get that dream in my vision and then I catch it, then he gives me the impartation. And then I go by obedience to the word by the impartation. And then I get the manifestation of his glory. And now I get the resolution of his instruction. Oh, Jesus. You see what I'm saying? We see, you speak in tongues so much, you start speaking in English from the language of your tongues and your, you, you know, the information, the revelation, the language and the power and the wisdom and the knowledge and the inside of your tongues overlays in your physical language. And then it downgrades carnality and it upgrades Holy Spirit finale. I was going to say fatality, you know, flawless victory. See, when Jesus knocked out the devil, it was a flaw. You know, I don't, I don't flawless. It was a flawless victory. Aria. So. That's a pure realm. I love it. I love it. Right? Interesting. Don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. I'm talking to myself. I want that state of power. The ability. See, the ability to capture. What was I going to say? What was I going to say? The ability to capture. It's the ability to captivate. Because when you can speak in the phenomenon of the flow, of the river, of the sequence, of the infinite, of the divine, and you learn that, but you learn how to do it in such a way, such a way where your gifts come in, where your abilities come in, where your talents come in, and then you expose the evil, you take a higher level of the oracle of wisdom you know i always get these angels that come to me and reward me with wisdoms with uh with pearls i always get these pearls with all these artifacts these scrolls these swords these upgrades and it's just it, it's amazing serving god is very rewarding spiritually and there are certain ways god will test you try you, provoke you. See, in my life, when God sees a true intention hidden in my heart and I worship him, I pray him, but I'm not giving him the true way I feel about a thing, he'll be like, oh, I'm going to do something with that. And he'll, he'll, he'll invoke me. Like what, what I mean by that, he'll put a pressure on me. He'll allow a circumstance come until I just tell him what's really in my heart because God wants what's in your heart and he's going to get it because he loves you so much. When you're so in love with somebody and you know there's something in their heart they're not telling you, you're going to get it out of them because you're crazy about them. You're so in love about them. You're so in love with them. You, you know, you love them so much. You're going to get that truth out of the heart. Same thing with God. And when I finally give it to him, that's where the resolution is. And that's one of the reasons why he wants it so bad, because he can't even he understands that I have to give that to him. He can't just slap me, rip my do surgery, rip my heart. And no, he, I have to give it to him. When you understand how to locate the truth within you and how to give it to God, that is the day your life is going to be filled with transformation and change. You know how you go through things and you're just like, I've been going through the same thing for months. You won't go through it any longer. You immediately the things you go through. You and I'm living in a level like and I'm and I'm and this is proven. Because I used to, I ain't even going to talk about the past. Now, every day of my life, there's nothing that keeps me bound like used to. You're, you know, months ago or six months ago, a year ago. But when I learned this principle, when I learned this principle, like everything in my life changes, automatically transform, transforms. You, you can feel it spiritually. You can feel it in the atmosphere. You can feel it in the relationship, whatever you're going through. It just changes because I learned this principle. <sighs> Somebody help me. Okay, let's keep going. The video quality must be high. Okay. If I need to get close and yell, I need you to hear my voice loudly. I don't want you to have to turn up the YouTube to 100 just to barely. I want you to be able to hear it at 40. Okay, the quality is so important. Because I know, I know powerful men of God. 
anointed like you ain't never seen, but they got the worst YouTube channel. I'm, I'm not trying to be mean, but they got the lowest quality videos. You can't even hear their voice. I'm like, bro, you got all this power, but how you, you, you know what I'm saying? So it's very important. And that's why I got 4K videos coming out where I'm just not even recording my face. I'm recording nature and I'm just giving you nuggets and just, I'm going to put music, I'm going to make it beautiful. Okay, because it's important how we get this message out. And it's the this wisdom of God, it, 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 tra it, 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 it translates, it exalts, it magnifies, it imparts, it gives, you got to understand the power of a man with wisdom. More desire to be than gold, sweeter than honey. All the things that thou may desire cannot be compared to her wisdom. You 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 understand the direction, how to make love, how to how to incite, how to how to be sweet to it. See, you gotta learn how to make love in the spirit. Now, what do I mean by that? You gotta learn how to be sweet to wisdom. You gotta learn how to give your desire to wisdom. You gotta learn how to exalt wisdom above your own little physical wife that you have sex with. Hopefully, you ain't having sex outside of marriage. It'll take your soul to hell. Now, I'm talking to myself, I'm not everything I'm telling other people, I'm talking to myself. Because, brother, if ain't nobody need deliverance, I need deliverance. I don't come like I'm this mighty prophet, this mighty man. I come as this humble servant that cleans toilets, and I just need Jesus. I don't try to boast myself into a degree of blessing and try to magnify. No, no, no. He said, he said, don't sit at the front, sit at the back and let the king promote you. So I always try to apply that principle to my mindset, my thought, the way I move, even when I'm being successful, even when people are promoting me and exalting me and complimenting me, I try to keep that mind frame of stay in the back and stay humbled so I can stay getting exalted, stay getting elevated. So when you get exalted, you go back to humility and then you get exalted to another degree and in another degree, you go back to another degree of humility. And so it's a situation of circum... Okay, where we at? Where we at? Because I just got started. Uh, I'm, see, one thing the body of Christ lacks is violence. When your wisdom is violent, when the way you worship Jesus is violent, when the way you win souls becomes violent, when the way, see, you got it too many, uh, just, uh, uh, no, when the way you progress in the things of God becomes violent, it will, it will invoke, it will trigger God himself. God is moved by violent faith. The kingdom of heaven suffers by violence and the violence taken by force. The kingdom of heaven suffers by violence and the violence, uh, 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 the kingdom of heaven suffereth by, su by. It's telling you in the scripture. You got to learn how to connect. You got to learn how to put this word here and these two spheres of the connection of who God and the power and the rain and the thunder of his might is going to come from. It says the kingdom of heaven suffers, listen, by violence. So by violence, you're going to take the kingdom. Not ask for the kingdom, not wait for the kingdom. But look, look, look what the scripture telling you. You got to learn how to dissect. I mean, you know how when you was in science class and you had to dissect frogs and you had to dissect, you got to learn how to dis dissect the scripture, the word of God. He said, by violence, the kingdom of heaven suffers by violence and the violent take it by force. Listen to that. Take it by force. No, they don't negotiate it. They don't wait about it. Well, God, no, they take it by force. And they, they implement the demand of the authority that they have been given, the authoritative power, that, and then they know how to initiate the regulation of the government of not just the kingdom of heaven, but who God is. Now that's higher. That's, you know, what's higher than a kingdom? It's the king that rules over the kingdom. Okay? Now when you're in Christ, in Christ... You're in everything he owns. You're in his, but you're, you don't just have the money of Jesus. You are the money. You are his voice. You are his reach. You are his highest level. Get it? Because you're in Christ. You don't just get Christ. You don't just buy Christ. You see, in earth, we buy, we work, we earn, we... Ooh, I'm getting all these impartations right now from touching people's souls. See, when you win souls, you get the reward. Oh, Jesus. I don't know if you want to know all this. When you win souls, you can be nice to people. You can be kind to people. You're showing them the character of Christ. That's a part of it. But when you actually win souls, one of the main ways I win souls is through violence. 
I let people know that I, first of all, I worship God like I'm crazy. The first thing, the first thing I talk about when we have a conversation, Jesus, hallelujah, I, do, I does that. And let me tell you, I don't care what I, I get results. We win in souls wherever we go. Now listen, when you win souls, you get the reward. This is big right here. You get the reward. How do I say this? Of their eternity. You get the reward of their destiny. What they will become, you get to become in that moment. That is the power of winning souls. A wise man. Now remember, wisdom is above all you could ever think or desire or ask for. So, a man of wisdom, a man above desire, a man above all that he could ask for, think, win in this life, win souls. A wise man wins souls. So you got to understand. Okay, that was good. I like that. I like that. I don't know about you, you know, but I like that. Okay, listen. Let's continue. Now, I don't know if I told you this before, but I feel like telling you again. See, a lot of people want promotion, but you got to learn to go to the promoter. Most people want promotion without the promoter, okay? And this is why they struggle. This is why I have struggled when I did until I got, remember, the just shall be delivered by knowledge. You need continual deliverance in higher levels you go to. Foolishness, ignorance will keep you out of the bounty of what you're looking for. A lot of times you don't even know what you're really looking for. People we say in life, we say as human beings, I want happiness. I'm looking for love. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. And we don't really, you know, I understand. Okay. Let, let me not be too mean. Let me not, let me not be too harsh. <sighs> hmm. Let me keep, let me keep going. I don't even. So you go to the promoter. Okay. Or you get around promoters. Now. If an aerial manager or a man, blah, 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 if a promoter gives you an opportunity, you can't go in there with all your comfort zones. Well, I'm, I'm used to being off on Saturday and Sunday. and I'm, No, you got to give that promoter more than anybody else has ever given to him. You work seven days a week. You work 10 hours a day. You don't even, you, you do, you talk to him like you're crazy. I have this aerial manager. And the first time I slipped, I was like, well, he, he called me and asked me to come. I'm like, wait a minute, I have Saturday and Sunday. But I caught it. I caught it. Now I talk to him like I'm crazy. I want to work every day. Let me work every day. Let me work this position, this position. Let me, let me, let me, and then, and then, and then, like I'm crazy. And then I'm finding ways to bring a solution. We needed a vacuum cleaner. I'm going to go buy it with my own money. I'm going to do things that nobody else does. Because I know this man has the power to promote me to a GM to a CO, to an aerial manager like him. So I'm giving, I'm, I'm acting, I'm talking crazy to this man. I told him, if you need anybody to work any position any day, if somebody calls off, I'm the first person. You call me, you call me, you call me, you call, because I learned something. If you have an opportunity, if a promoter comes to your life, anybody, you give that person everything you can and you make their life easier. A person's not just going to remember somebody that works hard. There's plenty of people that work hard. But when you take a burden off somebody or many burdens and you make their life easy, you will be you will be in forever remembrance in their conscience. They will never forget you. I know many people that work harder than anybody, but they have the most nastiest attitudes. I used to work with this one person. Worked harder than anybody, had the most nastiest demanding attitude. I said, I'd rather work with somebody that doesn't work that hard, that works 10 times less that hard, but has a good attitude. So, oh, Jesus, you got to understand the virtues of work ethic, not just working hard, willing to work, the, the virtues. So when it comes time for the promoter to think, who am I going to promote? The first person that's going to ring in their conscience is the one that made their life easier, wasn't whining and complaining, went about their own way, used their own money to enhance, used their own time, gave up their time, was willing to do anything, was willing to go to the next level, and they're going to promote you. I believe it's the same way with God. I truly do. 
But the secret about God is he's easy. What, what do you mean by that? See, we see, I love, I don't know the exact scripture or the verse, but he says, I don't know if it was in the Psalms, but he said, or maybe it was in the book of Job. I think it was in the book of Job. He said, I rather God, or I don't, I don't know, but I'm just going to tell you. He said, I rather God deal with me than man. There's a secret in that. I rather God deal with me than man. I'd rather get, if I got to be disciplined or have a consequence, I'd rather God give it to me than man. And let me tell you why. See, the reason why I say that, because God is so loving. You won't find anybody else in the world that loves like him. So when you know how to go through his heart, it's very easy to get him. I love in the scripture talks about that God's weaknesses are stronger than them. I'm like, wait a minute, what is, does God have a weakness? And I wouldn't say it's a weakness, but his love, his love is so easy to make things happen when you know how to move in his heart. He can't deny that. Man, brother, my shirt's soaking wet. What are we doing up in here? We working out, brother. That's what we do. We work out. That's what we do. You know, this is good, though, because when you sweat like this, it exfoliates you. It releases toxins that have been stored up in your body. When you work out, it releases stored up energy, stored up, and it releases it. And I love it. 